Hello there and welcome to episode 3 of Weapons of Mordow. This week's topic is the Zweihander, or I guess some might call it a Beidhander, oder der Doppelhander, whatever you might call it. It was a beast of a weapon designed to be used with two hands. In fact, its name is German for two-hander, and as one might notice from its appearance, it is essentially an oversized longsword. Well, let's hop right into our discussion on this devastating medieval weapon. The first Zweihanders were essentially longswords, having been first crafted what? around 1480 AD. From around the 1400s up like until that. 1560 AD, there was a general trend of increased length of swords. As a result, most Zweihanders were about 5 feet in length, well over 7, or even sometimes up to 8 feet in length for ceremonial versions, with a mass between 2 and 4 kilograms. Zweihanders more than 4 kilograms in mass were too unwieldy for combat, and would strictly be used for these ceremonial purposes. As mentioned before, the name Zweihander literally means two-hander in German. As such, this term may have been used to describe any sword, for example, a long sword, that was designed to be used with two hands. Some Zweihanders had a peculiar aesthetic to them in which they were forged with a wavy blade. These were known as Flammenschwerts, or flame swords, and despite looking gorgeous, the waves from the blade could be used in a tactical manner to assist in capturing strikes. The term Zweihander generally refers to the weapons used by a group of German mercenaries called the Landsknechte between 1490 and 1560 AD. They were primarily developed to be used alongside polearm formations, and due to the length of the weapons, could easily combat users of polearms. The evolution of the Zweihander saw the length and mass of the blade increase over its period of usage. Near the end of this evolution, the tactics involved were very similar to those used by polearms users, rather than those used by swordsmen. One famous user of the weapon, Pierre Gerloff Donia, is claimed to have been able to behead several combatants with a single swing of his Zweihander. The Zweihander began to fall out of use around the 1560s. By this time, firearms technologies had advanced, and the use of melee weapons as the primary weapons yeah, of war really began to fade. Tried. In Mordha, a decent number of the depictions of the epic nature of the Zweihander are shown. The blade length of Zweihander models in Mordha don't vary by much. In real life, some were as long as 7 feet, even longer, and some as short as 4 feet 7 inches in length. If you desire, you can have yourself a beautiful Flammenschwerz. All of the models in Mordhau also have Perrierhaken. These are hooks at the top of the Rikasso, that is the unsharpened part of the blade above the cross guard, that were used for parrying income tax. Mordhau's primary grip for the Zweihander is that of a normal sword stance, and it also has the option of switching to the half-swording stance as its alt mode. The Zweihander's oh, primary stance is devastating for use against unarmored and armored opponents alike. It can one-hit nakeds to the head and fully armored opponents with two headshots. The stab is slightly slower in terms of the wind-up than other swords, but it is perfectly viable considering it can match or outdistance any other sword in the game. The swings on the Zweihander are very slow, and because of this, the Zweihander takes much more time to learn than the longsword. For inexperienced players, the long swing times will get you chambered on a lot. To counter this, go for a series of long and short drags, randomly varying your usage of each. If you become a drag king, or a drag queen, no pun intended, then you can turn this devastating weapon into your bitch. The alternate attack on the Zweihander is equally amazing. While it's not very powerful against lightly armored opponents, it wrecks heavily armored opponents with ease. This is because of the release on the half storting stance is much quicker than the release on the other stance. If used accordingly, this drastic difference in weapon swing speed can be used to great effect in any form of combat in Mordhau. For this stance, an aggressive close quarter smackdown is best suited. Go in hard and relentless, otherwise you may miss due to decreased range. If it doesn't work out, back down and use the range stance to your best efforts. All in all, the Zweihander is a devastating weapon in Mordhau, but requires a bit more practice than the other weapons in the game. Now to rank this amazing weapon. Let's first discuss its general utility. The Zweihander has two very great stances that work great for any type of slash or stab. All are of medium to high damage, but the greater utility in this weapon stems for the big difference in range and timing between the two stances. Used properly, a well-trained swordsman can dispatch a countless number of enemies, switching between the primary and alternate mode of this weapon, fighting okay, close and long range when needed. The only cons to this weapon are its slow wind-up time, this takes a little bit of time to master compared to other weapons such as the longsword. Thus, the Zweihander receives a 4.5 out of 5 score in terms of general utility. The dueling effectiveness of this weapon goes hand in hand with its general utility. If mastered, you can dispatch almost all average to intermediate players and in the right circumstances some highly skilled players of a variety of weapons. Again, because of this weapon's long time to master compared to other weapons, it will receive a 4 out of 5 rating in terms of dueling effectiveness. The team play aspect 
aspect of this Vihander perhaps is its worst attribute, but this by no means makes it worthless. This Vihander will receive a 4 out of 5 star rating in terms of team play. The only reason it doesn't receive a 5 out of 5 score is because occasionally, due to the Zweihander's primary effective attack being slashes side to side, you can occasionally hit teammates. Because of this, I'm only going to give it a 4 out of 5 score. Aside from that though, it is a fantastic team play weapon, and when used alongside pull arms men, or when on the front lines of battle yourself, you can devastate and wreck enemies. I found that the best strat is to focus on your swings if you man the front lines, and to stab from behind teammates when they're fighting against other enemies, or to do overhead slashes. This can be difficult in hectic situations, resulting in team kills, but it's way less likely to result in team kills than side to side slashes. The Zweihander will receive a 4 out of 5 star rating in terms of team play. The random category for this week will be style. Does the Zweihander have the flair and pizzazz like the longsword did? Well, to be quite honest, the Zweihander is much more stylish than the longsword in general. In fact, the Flamenschwarz are some of the most beautiful swords I've ever seen. They're a little bit long for me and it takes away from the style in some sort of fashion. Thus, the Zweihander receive a 4.5 out of 5 stars in style. The results of our rankings are 17 out of 20 stars. That is 4 out of 5 stars in terms of dueling effectiveness, 4.5 out of 5 stars in terms of general utility, 4.5 out of 5 stars in terms of style, and 4 out of 5 stars in terms of the team play attributes of the weapon. The Zweihander is a fantastic weapon, however due to its higher than average learning time I believe this is a just score. A great weapon for an experienced user, but a nightmare for a noob. Like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. As this channel grows, I have been enjoying making content more, so I may start rolling out two more videos like this every week. Perhaps I'll start another video series highlighting on other aspects of Mordheim, or if you guys prefer, I can start making videos of other video games like Rising Storm 2 I play a lot of, or perhaps Escape from Tarkov. I'm very good at Tarkov, so I wouldn't mind making videos about the weapons in that game. As per usual, go ahead and comment on the topics of the style and weapon for next week's Weapons of Mordhau video, and let me know if you would like me to make any other videos like this, or any other sort of style of videos for Mordhau. It could be like the histories of the armor, mass scale fighting tactics, or I could make videos, like I said earlier, just about Tarkov. Any feedback is appreciated, and thanks so much for watching. Catch you guys on the next episode in a couple of days.